Welcome to this second React Uploady tutorial. My name is Yoav and today I'd like to talk about Uploady hooks. There are many hooks and they have a myriad of use cases. This time we'll mostly focus on what I call lifecycle event hooks. And to keep it short, we will only cover the basics. In future videos, we will dive deeper into more advanced use cases. If you haven't watched the first Uploady tutorial, I recommend you do it now, as we will build on top of the knowledge from the first video. You can click the link at the top and come back after you've watched it. I'll be here waiting. Okay, let's dive right in. Before we look at the code, there are a couple of concepts I'd like to introduce. When a user selects a file or files to upload, the uploader used by Uploady will create a representation of this action called a batch. The batch contains batch items, which in turn represent each of the files selected for upload. Batch items are typically uploaded one per request, but this behavior can be configured, as well as how many files to parallelize when uploading. A batch item has its upload lifecycle events, and the batch has its own. Once all items are uploaded, the batch is considered finalized. I will add a link to the events documentation in the description. As I mentioned, for the following tutorials, we will see just how useful these lifecycle event hooks can be. Let's take a look at the concepts and examples we'll go through next. First, we'll see how the lifecycle event hooks are imported and can be used. Next, we'll see how we can affect the UI using these hooks. For the third part, we'll see how to cancel and upload programmatically. And for the last part, we'll use a different type of hook to access Uploadies functionality. In terms of uploading packages needed for this next part, there's nothing new from the previous video. We just need the uploadie itself, which brings the provider hooks and uploading engine, and we use the upload button component to initiate the upload itself. Now, let's take a look at some code. Back in our demo app, I'll add a new story. As we saw in the previous video, we can quickly add uploadie and set it up with an upload endpoint. Notice that to use any of uploadie's hooks, you need to call them from a component rendered inside or under the uploadie provider tree. In our custom button component, we can use our hooks. I'll import some of them now. There are batch lifecycle event hooks and there are item lifecycle event hooks. The names are pretty self-explanatory. Each one is called with the callback and is passed the corresponding data, whether it's the batch or the item objects. With the imports in place, I can call these hooks. We'll keep it simple and log the output of each event to the Actions tab in our storybook. I'll add the Apple button itself and we're good to go. Now, when we select the file and the upload starts, we see all the events being logged on the screen. The batch add event gives us access to the options that Uploadly used to upload the files and access to the batch object itself with its properties and items that represent the files that were selected. As you can see, we have progress events that are called several times as the upload is performed, both for the item and the batch. And finally, we see the item and batch finish events. This, of course, is just the beginning, but it should give you an idea how easy it is to use and how powerful these hooks can be. In this tutorial, we'll see a quick example of how to affect the UI using uploady hooks. For now, it's going to be a very simple use case. We will disable the upload button while uploads are taking place. And we'll do this with the batch start and batch finish event hooks. We imported them already, so we can just use them now. And we'll set a simple boolean to true while uploading in our state. And we set it to false once the files in the batch finish uploading. For the upload button we're returning from our component, we use the extra props prop. This object map is spread as props to the underlying button component. So we can set the disable prop to our state flag. As you can see now in our app, the button becomes disabled during uploads 
and can be used again once they are complete. Next, we'll see how it's possible to implement logic that cancels an entire batch upload using the batch add hook. This particular hook relies on the cancelable event. Cancelable events accept a return value. If the value is a boolean false, the batch or item upload will be cancelled. These events are marked as cancelable in the docs. We use the batch add hook and we can implement our logic here. In this case, we can cancel the batch and all the files in it if more than nine files are selected. Notice we return false if there are more files. This is what cancels the upload. We can now add logging for the batch start that should only be called in case a batch isn't canceled. We can use another hook, the batch canceled hook, to log a message when the batch is canceled. Let's see this in action. When we select one file, the upload works as expected. And the same thing for three files. However, for 12 files, the batch is canceled. If you're asking yourself whether it's possible to cancel using asynchronous code, the answer is yes. Let's see how. We can return a promise or just use uh, async await in our callback. As before, when we try to upload more than nine files, the batch is canceled, but this time with a slight delay. For our last tutorial, we'll switch it up a bit and take a look at a different type of hook, the use upload hook. This hook returns an API object that provides different methods that interact with uploadies capabilities and the uploader engine itself. In the docs, this is referred to as the context API. This API is for more advanced use cases, as there is typically no need to use its methods as they are used internally by uploadies hooks and components. In this example, we'll look at one particular method, the show file upload method. When we call it, the device's file selection modal will appear. We trigger it from our custom button component. Using this API method, we can trigger the upload flow based on the user interaction without the need for uploadies upload button component, or any other component for that matter. We can pass the show file upload method any of the upload options, such as params or headers, we'd like to send with our request, just like we did in the previous video using the upload button. Now, our custom button can be used to initiate uploads without having to use any component beyond React's native one. And of course, it doesn't even have to be a button at all. In this video, we started to look at Uploadies many hooks. There is so much to say about them that one video is certainly isn't enough. We'll dive deeper into many of them in future videos. This time was about giving a glimpse into the richness and flexibility these hooks bring. I hope you find this useful. Let me know what you think in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to be notified about new videos. Now, go code!